everyone, hey all, and today we're going to round out wave three of the Transformers Earthrise line when we look at Fast Track in the latest Got By True review. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light them up, baby. And hit that notification bell. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, NL, and the Autobot family. Uh, as well as Autobot City Central and all of my social media links, they're all down in the description below. If you want to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, you can check us out on Patreon, you can see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course you can hit the join button right here on YouTube, and this is Fast Track. Granted, uh, a lot of people will know Fast Track as the, I guess, partner of Titan Class Scorponok, and when I looked at Scorponok, I loved the guy, but I was missing this guy, so I'm glad that he has come out. He uh, follows that weaponizer gimmick, and he's pretty good, but not perfect. That being said, if you have Scorponok, you're going to kind of want this guy. Why not check out availability for him from the Big Bad Toy Store? That link is down in the description. Maybe while you're at it, see if they have a Black Rorichi. Just saying. Just throwing it out there. But uh, the articulation's okay here. The coloration is pretty great, depending on if you want them for Fast Track or something and someone else, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Uh, the conversions, well, we'll get into those too. In fact, without any further ado, how about we head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And yes, indeed, here we are with the third offering of Wave 3 of the Earthrise line, and this is Fast Track himself, for those of you who don't know. This is one of the little minion lads that goes along with Titan Scorponok, and I dig the dude, I do. Now, I kind of figure we're gonna get um, Rorichi fairly soon in my neck of the woods. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we'll see for sure. And I really feel like that will become my tyrant spear when the time comes. For now, we'll run through the things with this guy. I'm not necessarily gonna show him with Scorponok because we actually have some things to talk about with Mr. Scorponok up and coming in just a little bit, so we'll see this guy again then. But we will cover things here now. So, this is the way he is at a package, but before we get to him himself, we're gonna take a look at the packaging first. And as you might well expect, this, of course, is nice Earthrise packaging. We have our boy over here in his tank mode, which is interesting. Usually they're in the robot mode, this is his tank mode. On the back we have uh, him in his robot mode as the Tyrant Spear, as the tank, and as all of his different bits and pieces, I guess, that could serve as a loadout. He comes with some wonderful Earthrise instructions. He has Cybertronian stats over here. I would venture to say to you that he is extremely average to a little below average. Why wouldn't he be? He's basically a drone dude at best. Uh, but they're great instructions. They look good. He looks good. Let's get to him. Now the story of this guy is a little more complex than one might think because when we talk about his coloration, I'm not going to reference uh, like his G1 release that came with Scorponok. No, rather, uh, I'm going to note that there was a character model for this guy. Presumably he was going to be appearing in the Rebirth, and presumably that was going to happen when the Rebirth was still supposed to be a five-part uh, miniseries, I guess, rather than a three-part, so he got caught and never actually appeared, but he did appear in Japan uh, as part of Super God Master Force. This model was not, however, called Fast Track. It was the... Uh, guard minders, I think they were called. Basically, they were the drones that followed Black Ro Rorichi, uh, who is the yellowy colored version of this guy. Or, based on the selects release we're getting, the gold colored version. So, Fast Track here is kind of one of those drones. How does his coloration stack up to that Japanese coloration? Uh, gray lower legs, kind of a darker gray, almost black thigh. Uh, we have gray on the abdomen, we have blue on the windows, uh, sorry, we have gray on the chest, blue on the windows, we have like that darker gray on the abdomen, uh, the arms are correct, 
The only thing, the orange tires are correct, the only thing kind of different here is the orange blasters that go on his shoulders. Mine are really loose. Interestingly, if I turn them upside down, they don't come out, like they won't fall out, but like they're really loose in the shoulders. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't feel good in the shoulders. They can go over his hands. They look great there. And these orange things do appear when they're in their tank mode in Super God Master Force. So you know what? I'm going to say, honestly, 10. I'm honestly going to say 10. Great start. What about the articulation for the guy? Pretty great. The head goes left and right. Not much up and down. Ooh, and I just popped an arm off, but that's my own fault. The arm can go all the way around. I thought it could go out further than that. Maybe it can't. Hmm. Hmm. I think that might be as far out as the arm can go. We have a swivel. We have an elbow to 90 degrees. We have a wrist rotation. We have a waist. Legs back, legs forward. We have a thigh swivel that mm, is a mushroom peg in here, I think. Yeah. Uh, we have 90 degrees at the knee. We have a toe tilt and we have an ankle tilt, which is very nice. But I feel like he could use an extra heel spur if I'm being perfectly honest about it. I'm just going to put that in his hand. These, they slot in his hand way better. Unfortunately, because of the way everything is molded all around the peg. Though there are other pegs on the guy, these can't go anywhere else. It's, I think that's disappointing. Um, wow, I really thought that the arms went out further. That's disappointing, to me anyway. Maybe not to you, but it is to me. So articulation wise, I'm gonna have to say that the guy is seven and a half. It's all right, but it's not stand out as far as I'm concerned. I should note as well that he also comes with, this is really for the Tyrant Spear, he also comes with this thing. It's a little, it's just a little thing. It goes over a peg behind his arm. Uh, it's like a little spearhead, basically. So we're just gonna lay that aside for now. But yeah, so a seven and a half, a 10. I don't know, the guy overall now is somewhere around uh, eight and a half. He's not bad, but there are definitely some issues here. I've also heard, though it's not the case on mine, some people have experienced the leg here being super duper loose. Mine isn't, uh, but it is a known QC issue. So now that we know we have a 10 for his look and a 7.5 for his articulation, that averages out to 8.25. Let's get into the transformation. To do that, we're gonna go to tank mode first, then we'll see his loadout. And I, I say that like that because I'm not a big fan of these loadouts, and, but I'll show it, I guess. And then finally we'll go to the Tyrant Spear mode. Yeah, yeah, that seems like a good way to do this. So, where do we begin here? We start by removing this off the back, and then we can take the upper body apart from the lower body, and we fold these pieces up. When we fold these pieces up, we have a rectangular tab here and here. They will go into slots by the toes down here and down here and these should just fold over. I find more often than not that mine don't like to exactly line up and tab in nicely. I don't know, we'll see how well it wants to do it here now. But I'm not holding high hope for it. Um, hmm, well I'll be a little bit better than usual. This is the lower body basically now done. And when we go to connect this to the upper body, we have two tabs back here and we have uh, two more tabs right here. And those four tabs are going to be what secures the bottom to the top. Speaking of the top, this is what we have left. And basically we turn it around because this is where we want to, to focus on. We have two peg holes back here. We're going to use those in a bit for now. We turn the head around. Here we can take out this peg because it makes it a little easier to reach up here and bring out this piece. This piece is one of those uh, like attaching pieces. Put that back in his hand. We bring the arms out toward the back of the guy. So like his, his chest is here with his head turned around now the arms are pointing toward what was his back. 
we rotate the arms so that we can have uh, now just the blasters on top instead of seeing his fists. And now using those two peg holes, those five millimeter peg holes in the chest, we use two pegs that are on this piece and we basically slide this right in over his face. Now we have the upper body and we have two uh, peg holes back here and two more peg holes up here. The easiest way to attach the lower body to the upper body is to push the back in and then push the top down and boom, in the end, here you have Fast Track in his tank mode. And what a dandy little tank he is. He rolls well. There's room back here. There's a couple of pegs, I think, back here somewhere. Though I don't see them right now, but they're definitely there. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm not seeing them. I don't know, somewhere back here there's a couple of pegs, maybe it's just this space here. But you can put uh, Lord Zarek back there. I'm just not sure how. Uh, he rolls like a champion. This piece is out. I like to fold it up over the back here. It just hides the chest a little more. The tank mode, I mean, the arms still have full functionality, so whatever you could kind of do, however you want him to kind of be able to blast, he can because of the elbow and the swivels and stuff. But this is pretty great. I like this mode. But of course, that's not his only mode. We could take the guy apart and uh, turn him into like a loadout. And to do the loadout mode, We'll begin by taking off the arms of the guy. We're going to separate all of that again, and we're going to, once again, open up the legs and take all of that off. And we're going to put these pieces down so that we can put this piece back up, take that off, put these two pieces together. I took everything apart and I put these two pieces together because that's kind of where it is that we need to start to do this. Now, now that we got this done, we come and using the peg hole on the bottom of the foot, this is the leg, normally it goes on this way, but now this time around, we're going to... Peg it up there and we're going to bring the foot up over. And we're going to do the same on the other side. We're going to peg it up there and bring the foot up over. You can probably get an idea of where this is headed. Once you have these done, uh, you should be able to peg the arms in right there and peg this arm using the shoulder in right there. That's, that's, that's pretty long, man. That is pretty long. Um, okay. Once you have that done, you can basically turn it like this. So now he's sort of upside down. And there's a peg in here, really in his tummy. I took the peg out earlier. That is how he's going to attach, is with that little piece back there. And then finally, we will do something else with the other part. So... He's supposed to go with run amok, so why not put him on run amok? And so he's mounted on a port on run amok's back, but I mean, anybody who has a port on their back, you can do this if you want and have these two huge shoulder cannons, I guess. I made one mistake. I thought that he uh, had the cannons kind of fold out at the hip, but they don't. What they're folding on is the ankle hinge of the foot. You need to fold it on that hinge because otherwise it kind of doesn't fit over the, over the shoulder. That does leave us though with this one piece, which we close out like this. And then there's a peg right here and that peg can just go on the arm here. And it serves as like a shield. Um, okay, I guess if you like the loadout. But I think the real jewel here is him in all of his bits and pieces for Tyrant Spear mode. And so I just took everything apart and we're going to basically put it back together. So to do the Tyrant Spear after you have all of his bits and pieces apart. Basically how we're going to do this is we take the... Two leg pieces here first. And the two leg pieces will basically end up going together 
like this. That is our goal. How do we get them together like that? Well, it's actually pretty easy because this piece that was their legs to begin with is going to basically be the thing that they go on over now the right way. Instead of being in kind of upside down like they were, now they're in the right side up right way. Once we have this done, we can take the uh, next section, which is this section here, and we leave it folded out like we did for the shield mode that was on Runamuck, and we basically peg that into the feet. like that and we fold the toes up a little bit at, you know as much as we can anyway then right in the very tip up here we put the spare there's a little hole and the spare goes up there and like I think it's generally looking pretty you know it's looking it's looking all right it's looking okay it's looking very tyrant spare ish once we have that done then using this peg here we use the shoulder and we put it in. Leaving the blaster on here, we put the other arm in. And this, in the end, just as it is, is the tyrant spare in the whole thing. Now, that being said, we are left over with the head and upper torso. It is not used. That's a bit of a shame. I mean, I guess if you really, really, really looked and tried, maybe you'd find a place to poke the thing. I don't know, but it's not supposed to really be used. This looks great, and he can grip it in his hand, but unfortunately, to say it's solid is not, no, not really. If you turn this around, like, you have, you know, like, it's kind of, it depends on the angle that you got these arms on. I feel like this would really benefit from somehow some way having another piece that maybe ran up the back of it to keep it solidified if you could do that i just lost my actual spear if you could do that i think this would be way better it looks cool it can display in scorpionox hand but i don't think it's the most functional spear here's the thing i like the robot i like the tank mode uh, the loadout of the two big shoulder blasters is kind of cumbersome, and the Tyrant Spear, while it looks cool, is also kind of cumbersome. I think the transformation is pretty good. I'm going to give it a solid 8. He was getting an 8.25. Overall, Fast Track is about an 8. He's good, but with some tolerance issues, with some iffy alt modes, there are definitely ways that this guy could have been better. So here we are again. Here he is again, and... There's good and bad here for sure. First things first, the coloration is pretty much perfect for a guard minder, which of course in Japan were like the minions of Black Rorichi basically and Devil Z. Um, I think that's what I'm going to use this guy as. In fact, I have a second copy for that explicit reason. Uh, my idea, my plan, my hope is that Black Rorichi can kind of be the leader of this little trio. So you could army build these guys pretty convincingly. Uh, I like the coloration being so accurate to that because we do have an animation model. So I'm glad that it matches that. The articulation is all right. A heel spur would have helped and been nice. I wish that the arms could go out further than this. That's pretty limited and a bit disappointing. I don't know. In terms of the transformations, the robot mode is fine. The Tyrant Spare looks good, but because of the elbows on the arms, accursed elbows, uh, the, I guess, handle of it is not solid at all, really. You really need to kind of have it for display and held the right way. And the tank mode, that's where this guy shines. Honestly, well, these guys shine. Uh, honestly, I think the tank mode is the best mode. I really like it. I do wish that we had better storage for his orange blasters too, because they do feel quite loose in the shoulders. There's a lot here to like, but it's definitely not the strongest from Wave 3. And it's definitely not the strongest of the Earthrise line. Let me know what you think about Fast Track here. Do you like them? Do you not like them? If you want to use them as guard minders, I appreciate you guys coming by and giving me some of your extremely valuable time. Man, I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can check out the link uh, for 
Yeah, you can check out the donate link. You can check us out on Patreon. You can see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course, you can hit the join button right here on YouTube and become a channel member while you're at it, man. Hit the subscribe button. Stick around. Have some fun with us here on the channel. Don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single day, man, you do make a difference. And I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.